We're going to go to Acts chapter number one. And this will be our third lesson. We've been in uh, the book of Acts. We first couple of Wednesday nights, we did an introduction. And the reason we spent so much time on the introduction is because if you don't get the, lay, the layout or the proper placement of the book of Acts, you will be totally confused. Most of your false doctrine, you've heard me say this before, most of your false doctrine and a lot of the beliefs that are out there uh, come from the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a history book. It's a history book of the beginnings of the church. Uh, it is a transitional book. What I mean by that, it'll transition. It'll take you from uh, law to grace, from Peter to Paul, from Jew to Gentile. The first part of the book of Acts till you get to about chapter 12 is very heavily, heavily Jewish. And then that thing tapers off. And by the time the apostle Paul gets saved, remember Paul, yes, Paul was a Jew, but he was the minister to the Gentiles. That's why he wrote Romans, 1st and Corinthians, Galatians, 1st and Thessalonians, Ephesians, so on and so forth. 13 books to the church, uh, to the church, which is his body. And so that's where uh, Paul uh, writes all of that after he gets saved in Acts chapter number 9. But the first part of that is very heavily Jewish. Now, some of this is repetition, and I know that. Now, if uh, I think most of you have seen this, and I think I've got a picture of it somewhere. Let's see. Yes, that's the way that looks. <clears throat> and this is the way all the apostles, Peter and, and the rest of them, this is the way Peter saw uh, the layout. If you'll notice, there's no church in here. There's no rapture in here. There's no, um, you know, church age, if you will. Why? You have to, when you think about the book of Acts, think about this. When Peter is writing the book of Acts, all he had was Genesis through Malachi, the Old Testament. That's all he had. He didn't have, Romans hadn't been written yet. First St. Corinthians hadn't been written yet. Galatians hadn't been written. None of these, Paul, Paul wasn't even saved yet. So the, some of the stuff that we know now, saved by grace through faith, all of that kind of stuff, Peter didn't know, didn't realize, and none of the apostles know, knew. The morning after the resurrection, Peter woke up, still goes to church on Saturday, still pork abstains, still keeps the Old Testament law. Why? He don't know to do anything different. That makes sense? Peter gets up the day of the... What did Jesus do on the, on the cross? He nailed all the Old Testament law to the cross. What? That means dietary laws. But Peter... Peter is still pork abstaining. Does he have to? No, but he don't know that he don't have to. Until Acts 10, where, remember, told you this last week, the sheep, all the animals come down, and it happens in Acts 10. God nailed it to the cross back here, nine chapters ago. But in Acts 10, God sends the animals down. And God says, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, mm-mm, I'm a Jew. I'm poor. I'm, I ain't never had anything in my mouth unclean. What God is saying, Peter, listen, there is a change. It is a transition. We're moving from law to grace. So there's a change. That's why in 1 Thessalonians, it says, uh, let nothing be refused if it be re received with thanksgiving. That's why when we have a meal, pray over food, receive with thanksgiving, eat it. You can eat pig now. Somebody said, amen. <laughs> but back here, these Jews didn't. But now you can. It's a progression. Uh, that's why you don't go to the book of Acts to get all of your uh, church doctrine. Now, when Paul gets saved, he gets enlightenment. And then there we go. We have the church, uh, which is viewed there. The church, which is his body, all that kind of stuff. But uh, so, and you get that in your mind, and uh, you get that in your mind, and you sort of, I'll give you, watch this. Here's something I found. 
the transition from Peter to Paul. Before I show you that, uh, let me find the verse. I should have been a little more prepared. Uh, I have to go back because we've already seen this. Uh, hang on. Don't go to a commercial break just yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking for... Go to... Paul was the minister to the Gentiles. And Peter was the minister to... Uh, here we go. Galatians 2, 7, watch. But contrary wise... Now, Galatians, who's, who writes Galatians? Paul. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, y'all remember who the uncircumcision is? That's the Gentiles. They're uncircumcised. The gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me. Who's the me? Paul. As the gospel of the circumcision, who's that? Jews was unto Peter. So the first part of the book of Acts, the gospel, Peter, is preaching to Jews. Paul, when he gets saved, he's the minister. All right, I'll give you another verse. Uh, let's see, Romans 15, that I, Paul, should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the who? Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the, up, the offering up of the Gentiles might be accepted, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Paul was the minister to the Gentiles. Now, now that I found that, let me find out where else I was going. Oh, I wanted to show you this. I found that. And uh, this is why I wanted to bring your attention to it. Watch. First part of the book of Acts. Peter's name is mentioned 57 times between chapters 1 through 12. Paul's name, which was Saul before, his name was mentioned 16 times right here. Once you get over here, watch the difference. Peter's name is mentioned once. Paul's name is mentioned 141 times. Do you see? We go from Peter, very heavily Jewish, because he's the minister to the who? Jews. All the way to Paul, and sort of Peter fades out, and Paul comes to the scene. And then writes 13 books to the New Testament. Or New Testament church, rather. Okay. Now, let's look at Acts chapter number 1. <clears throat> Acts chapter number 1. And we'll read down to where we got to, okay? Acts chapter number 1. And uh, let's see. Verse 1. The former treaty have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. We've already went all through all those verses. I showed you the verses where he was seen above 500 people at one time. Uh, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days thence. Now, here in chapter 1, in chapter 1, uh, there's about 10 days between 1 and 2. He ascends in chapter 1. And Pentecost is in chapter 2. That's the 50th day. And uh, so that's, uh, he was seen of the disciples about 40 days before he was taken up. So that's 1. And the 50th day is uh, Pentecost in chapter 2. So basically uh, about 10 days uh, between there. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days thence. When they therefore were come together. Now, get this verse right here. Now watch. It, get this right here. When Peter's writing, it always helps to find out what they're thinking. We know. Because we have read Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Thessalonians, Ephesians. We've read all of that books. 
They didn't have those books. So when Jesus dies on the cross, he's buried, he rose again the third day. Peter, we think, Peter, you know, he's like, oh, Lord, oh, we thank you for dying for us and saving us and shedding your blood to forgive us of all our sins so we can go to heaven. That ain't what Peter was thinking. Jews were not looking for a savior. They were looking for a king. They had no idea that this death, burial, and resurrection had anything to do with their salvation. Their salvation was physical in their mind. What is Matthew, where is he born? King of the Jews. They were looking for a king. They were looking for somebody to overthrow Caesar. And so that's why Jesus taught his disciples, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. They're looking for a kingdom. That's why Peter liked this. No church, no rapture. It goes from the cross to the kingdom. In their mind, that's what they're thinking. You say, how do you know they were thinking that? Watch this. Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, Jesus, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Y'all see that? They're thinking, okay. They crucified the Messiah. They buried him. And he, and he fooled them and rose again the third day. So, Lord, when are you going to be king? We're ready to elect you as king. You ready? And Jesus is like, y'all get somewhere and sit down. It ain't time for that yet. Verse 7. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Now, verse number 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, let me get back to that one. I did it last week, and I'll do it again this one just to get everybody on the same page. Where'd I go? Here we go. Now, okay, here's the difference. Let me explain the difference in Wednesday night and Sunday morning. Sunday morning, we can take any verse, spiritualize. I'll give you, for instance, well, by, back, back up just one second. Let me give you the doctrinal application of that verse. You should be about witnesses, both Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. That is the layout of the book of Acts. In the first part of the book of Acts, chapters 1 through 7, it's Jerusalem. Then they go in chapter number 8, guess where they go? Samaria. What's some... Jerusalem, who's there? Jews. Samaria, who's there? Samaritans, half Jew, half Gentile. Judea, Samaria. Then to the uttermost parts of the earth, then we go strictly Gentile. So you go Jew, half Jew, half Gentile, all the way Gentile. Y'all see that? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's the whole layout of the book of Acts. Now, if y'all remember this when we had revival, this is what you call a spiritual application. I'll show you the difference in Wednesday night and Sunday morning. If I was going to preach Acts 1-8 on Sunday morning, I would preach a, 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 a simple spiritual application. If y'all remember Brother Ronnie Coleman from Jackson, he preached one night of revival. He preached on Acts 1-8, and he used this. He said, Millsfield is our Jerusalem. Judea and Samaria, that's the county, or two or three tri-counties. And then, you see how that gets bigger? That's a spiritual application. Millsfield, that's our Jerusalem. We've got to reach Jerusalem, our Jerusalem. We've got to reach Millsfield first, and then we'll spread out and reach the county. And after we reach the county, then we'll spread. And we preach that. That's what we're supposed to do, Right? The doctrinal application is that's, what, that's the layout of the book of Acts. You see the difference in Wednesday night Bible study and Sunday morning preaching? Okay, I hope you do because there's a difference. Um, now, verse 9. And when they had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as they went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now, probably Moses and Elijah. I don't know that to be true, but I'm guessing probably Moses and Elijah. Verse 11. 
Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you in heaven, shall so come in like manner, just as you've seen him go into heaven. Now, this right here is the perfect, uh, this is in reference to the second coming. Remember, remember, like this. In other words, when Paul and Peter's writing in Acts 1, Basically, you just take your hand where this rapture is and just all the way over here to here because they didn't see none of this. They saw the cross and they saw a kingdom. Lord, is it time to restore your kingdom? <laughs> no, Peter. We got, a lot of, we got a lot of saving folks to do. Peter's thinking, king, sit on your throne. We'll cut Caesar's head off and... That's the whole reason they crucified Jesus, remember? We have no king but Caesar. And they chose Caesar over Christ. It's a whole deal. It's a kingdom thing. Peter's thinking kingdom, and then Paul comes on the scene, and he's thinking kingdom of God, getting saved, and all that kind of good stuff. So that is uh, why that is like that. Now, this same Jesus, there's Acts 1, this same Jesus he leaves from the Mount of Olives, and he's coming back to the Mount of Olives. We know he's not talking about the rapture, because the rapture, the Lord don't come to this earth. We go to meet him in the air. The second coming is when he comes. I'll give you, uh, let's see if I got the verses. Oh, uh, let's see, Zechariah. Here we go. Zechariah. It's up on the screen for you. Zechariah 14, 1 through 4. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. The day of the Lord is always in reference to the same coming. The day of the Lord cometh, and the spoil to be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, the houses rivaled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and residue of the people shall not be cut off. Oh, y'all not seeing that, are you? <laughs> and the residue of that people shall not be cut off from the city. That's talking about the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon right here. All right. And then... Shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle? Here we go. Ready? Verse 4, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the what? Mount of Olives. That's where he left from. And those two men, whomever they are, you say, why do you say Moses light? If this is a picture of that, who shows up before this? Moses and Elijah. So who are these two men over here? Probably Moses and Elijah. I don't know. Don't matter to me. I'm just throwing a wild guess out there. And uh, so his feet shall stand on that day. And the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east, toward the west. And there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed toward uh, the north, uh, half of it toward the south. And it's going to split. That city is going to split. Now, his throne is going to be right there when he comes out in the same coming. This same Jesus is coming back just like you've seen him go. He left from the Mount of Olives. He's coming back to the Mount of Olives. See, he didn't mention this because why? He don't, he didn't, Paul, Peter don't see that. Who wrote about that? Paul. Where is the rapture found? The rapture ain't found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Written by, see? It all depends on, uh, anyway, that's where all of the confusion comes from, especially in the book of Acts. Now, all right, let's look at verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem. Now we'll get to where we about left off last week. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. That's how I know that's where he left from, which is from Jerusalem, Sabbath day's journey. That's about a half a mile. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew uh, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. There's 11 disciples there. One's missing. Who's missing? Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, we'll read about him in just a minute. He went out and hung himself, went to his own place. Uh, we got 11 disciples here. Now, I said this, I'll say it again for the new folks. 
These 11, if you match these 11 names up with Matthew chapter 15, is it Matthew 10 or 15? Might have been Matthew 10 is where he calls out those disciples. The list of names in Matthew 10 and the list of names of the disciples in Acts 1 are different. And everybody goes, oh, there's mistakes in the Bible. There's never mistakes in the Bible. Now, remember this. I told you all this before, but I'm doing this for repetition's sake. Uh, what's another name for William? Bill. Uh, what's another name? Somebody help me. Robert. Bob. Um, so, how many names did Peter have? Peter, Cephas, Simon. You see? So if, if Peter, when he's, uh, or Luke, when he's writing here and he calls them by another name, uh, some people, I think Phyllis calls, you call him Charlie. We call him Charles. And me and Keith has called him other stuff. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's how you explain that. Okay. Now, there's one missing, and that's obviously Judas Iscariot. Now, verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Now, this is where we stopped last week. This is the last mention of Mary. The last mention of Mary. Now, obviously, she must have died pretty soon after this. Maybe. I don't know. But here's the last time you'll see the mother of Jesus mention Mary. Um, and... Uh, I'm going to give you the verses. I gave them to you last week. Give them to you again. Matthew 13, 55 and Mark 6, 30, uh, Mark 6, 3. Jesus had other brothers and sisters. After Mary and Joseph, they did not come together. Jesus was uh, virgin born. Then Mary and Joseph had other children after that. And that's where you say uh, with his brethren, and uh, he had some, what do you call it? I guess it half, half brothers, half sisters. Um, now, have you ever thought about this? Luke, the book of Luke, Luke was a physician, a doctor, okay? Luke wrote about the virgin birth in Luke 2, and the resurrection of Jesus, people say, well, he couldn't have been virgin born and he couldn't have rose from the dead. That's impossible. Well, you can't fool a doctor. And it's funny how a doctor wrote about it and says, I'm telling you, that's what happened, you know. Anyway, that's a side note. All right, verse uh, 15. They're all in the upper room uh, here, one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. Verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, uh, the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Now, all right, how many disciples do we have here in Acts 1? We have 11. They're fixing to replace Judas. The reason they're fixing to replace Judas is because there has to be, um, there has to be 12. Why? 12 in Bible numerics is the number for the Jewish nation, 12. 12 disciples, uh, the uh, New Jerusalem, 12 foundations. The 12 apostles are on each of those uh, 12 foundations. There's 12 gates. Upon each gate, one of the names of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, 12, is in relation to Jew. So we've got 11. We have to replace and get 12. That's why they had to replace Judas. Now, here's something, here's something I want to show you. We're fixing to replace him right here. We're fixing to read about it. But here's something I want, I want to point out to you. Now, watch this. A while ago, we was talking about the transition from Jew to Gentile. Remember that? Now, watch. We replace Judas to make it 12. Okay? 
In Acts 12, another disciple gets his head cut off. His name is James. And guess what? They don't replace him. Why? Because we've moved now. By the time you get past 12, we've moved, and now we've went. Y'all see? We lost Judas. We're down to 11. We have to replace him. Why? Because we're still in Jewish territory. James gets his head cut off in 12, and they don't replace him to make. You see? Because why? We done moved on. Paul's done got saved in 9. Cornelius, a Gentile, got saved in 10. Ethiopian eunuch gets saved in 8. I mean, here we go. See the difference? All right. Uh, Let's see. Here we go. Verse uh, 16. Men and brethren... This scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas. Now, it says by the mouth of David. Anybody want to take a wild guess where David wrote about this? In the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, I think it's uh, 41. Psalm, David wrote this, Psalm 41, verse 9. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat. Uh, of my bread hath lifted up his heel against me. P- uh, Peter says, hey, by, the, by hol- the Holy Spirit and by the mouth of David, he wrote about this particular day. This thing, Judas uh, uh, betraying the Lord, was prophesied back in, in Psalms. All right, verse 17. For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. Now, a lot of people have said, well, he was numbered with us, so that means Judas must have been saved, and then he lost his salvation. Mm -mm. Judas never had to begin with. You say, how do you know? He was numbered with them. If he was numbered with them, he had to be saved. Now, remember Isaiah 53. You have to compare Scripture with Scripture. Watch this. Jesus was numbered with the transgressors. Did that make Jesus a transgressor? But he was numbered with them. But he wasn't one. Judas is numbered with the 12, but he's not saved. See? That's how you clear up by comparing Scripture with Scripture. For he was numbered with us, had obtained part of his, this ministry. There's a lot I could tell you about Judas. Uh, you'll, we'll, I started to say you'll probably see him again. Uh, I'm not talking about y'all. If you're saved, you won't see it again unless you watch it from your television in the mansion, your big screen that you got in the living room. But Judas will probably uh, come back in the tribulation. I ain't got time to prove that, but anyway, uh, I can do it. Uh, Verse 18. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. And falling headlong, he burst asunder. Is everybody had supper already? Now this man purchased a field with a roar of iniquity. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as the field is called in the proper tongue, uh, Akladama. That's an Aramaic... um, Word that is to say the field of blood. Now, here's something I want to, um, you know, point out. People, people say, well, Judas hung, went out and hung himself. Well, Acts one says he fell headlong and burst asunder, and all it and his guts come out. Well, you have to compare scripture with scripture. Now, I'm going to read Matthew 27. It was too much for me to put on the screen, so I'm going to go to Matthew 27. And we're going to read, and we'll clear up all of this by reading and and watch what happens. Okay? Matthew 27, verse 3. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned, and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to it. Or to that. And he cast down the 30, uh, excuse me, the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Y'all see that? Matthew 27, verse 5, he went out and hanged himself. Verse 6, 
the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It's not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it was a price of it was betrayal money. Judas brought the 30 pieces, throwed it on the temple. Well, they wasn't going to deposit it and put it in the bank. They said, that wouldn't, that, this, is, this is blood money here. This is money that was used to betray Jesus. So what they did, they took that money and went and bought this field where Judas uh, went out and hung himself. Uh, verse 7, and they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Uh, then was fulfilled that which spoken, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and it goes and, and, re and refers to the Old Testament where that was uh, prophesied of. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, all right, Jesus went out and hung himself. And, uh, and, and so, but Acts 1 says all this. And he, and he fell headlong and this, that, and the other. Okay. Jerusalem is the city that sets upon the hill. If you were to look, and I did this this afternoon, I looked up that, that word, akladama. It is an Aramaic uh, word, but it's the field of blood. When you look that up in Jerusalem, I think it's on the eastern side of Jerusalem, and, and it, and it uh, hangs over a cliff and goes down, and it runs down into Gehenna. Gehenna is a place, I get this right here. Follow me. Gehenna is uh, the place where they kept it fire, uh, burn it. That's where they burnt trash. They, that's where they burnt uh, people with leprosy that died of leprosy. They would just throw them off into Gehenna. Gehenna is a picture and a type, anybody want to guess, of hell. Judas went out over a cliff, probably in a tree. I don't know. Don't say. But he hung himself somehow out over this cliff. G Jesus dies on the cross earthquake and the rocks rent. If the earth quaked so bad to break rocks in two. Judas is out there hanging by his neck. He falls headlong and bursts asunder down in there. He goes down toward Gehenna. Matthew 25 or 40. No, uh, Acts 1.25 says that he might go to his own place. Judas went to his own place as if that he owned the place. It was his. Hmm. Everybody see that? Now verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms Remember, by the mouth of David over here in 16, it's written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. His bish the bishopric is a, his, uh, his uh, apostleship. Uh, that's, that's what it is. Let somebody else take. Okay? Uh, we, we pray that quite often. Um, in the days we live in now, um, let another man take his office. Anyway, um, don't worry about that. We'll cut that out of the internet. All right. Verse 21. Wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us by the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Now, we ain't got but a few more verses. I want you to stay with me right here because we're fixing to cover a multitude of territory right here real quick. Now, we've already dealt with Judas. Um, Matthew 27 is where I was reading a few minutes ago. We got 11 disciples. We have to replace Judas to make 12 until we get to, you know, chapter 12, and then we don't need them anymore. But we've got to have these apostles until you get here. Now, I'll show you why. Get this right here real good. We've got to replace. We've got to have 12. Okay, so this is what they do. Uh, they, got, they brought two guys uh, together here. All right, verse 21. Wherefore, these men, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went out among us, watch verse 22. Beginning from the baptism of John. So, whoever 
the replacement for Judas had to be baptized by John. Y'all see that? Beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, witness the ascension, must, must, one, be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. To be an apostle, you had to be baptized by John and witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Y'all see that? Do y'all know anybody today, living today, on television, radio, or in Tennessee, or anywhere in the world, that has been baptized by John and witnessed, I witnessed, the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Y'all know of any? So what y'all are telling me is, today there is no such thing as an apostle. And you would be correct. Now, I saw one, one time at uh, Walmart, and he said, Brother Jerry, you heard you on the radio, da 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 He said, I'm apostle so-and-so. I said, man, let me shake your hand. Man, how old are you? <laughs> he said, what? I said, you got to be old. You had to be baptized by John to witness the resurrection of Christ. That's pretty old. Uh, he didn't catch on. Anyway, um, now, reason I say that, the gifts, y'all ever heard the gifts of the apostles? Okay. Uh, let me get back here. Let me show you this. Uh, let's see, where was it? Get my, get my verses here. And let's see. Lord, help me. He's going to help me right here. 1 Corinthians 1, Y'all see that? Jews require what? Sign. They have to see it. Jews require a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom. Paul says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Peter says, Jews walk by sight and not by faith. That's why they had to have 12 apostles that had the sign gifts. So what the sign gifts are, Mark 16. Drinking deadly poison. Speak with other tongues. What's some of the rest of them? Oh, handling snakes. Deadly serpents. Y'all with me? Y'all not believe? Okay, look. I don't come to church without doing my homework. I promise I don't. Y'all, some of you scratching the head, I'm going to it. Mark 16. Watch what it says. Verse 17, and these signs, who requires a sign? Jews require a sign. Verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto him, he was received up into heaven. We're reading about the same time. That's ascension. We're reading about the ascension in Acts 1. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs. Follow. Who's, who requires signs? Remember what I told you? Peter didn't have... Peter didn't have nothing but an Old Testament. Y'all with me? He didn't have nothing but an Old Testament. You know, when I preached Sunday, I said, the Bible says, da 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 right here, boom, right there. Peter couldn't do that. These apostles, because the Jews have to see it, they require what? So these 12 apostles all through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so on and so forth, they had to pick up snakes and and drink deadly poison, and whatever, and everybody's like, oh. After that last apostle died, we don't have any apostles anymore. Why? We don't need them. I have something better than handling a snake. 
I can tell my congregation now, I don't have to have a, a, a copperhead up here and say, y'all believe what I'm telling you? No, I have the word. Mark 16 said they had to have the signs because they were Jews require a sign and they walk by sight, not by faith. But I have the word, completed word, you see. It's a difference. Anyway, I hope that helps. Now, um, you say, how do you know? Well, I, what is it, 11 minutes after 7? No. Watch this. The apostle Paul was an apostle. He was an apostle. But watch this. And uh, let's see. Uh, if you, um, uh, Mark 16 said, these signs shall follow them, da, 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 a deadly serpent, it will not hurt them. Okay. Y'all remember, where was it? Let's see, Acts, what was it? Acts, uh, where Paul, uh, Paul got bit by that viper. Can't remember what chapter it was. Anyway, he got bit by that viper. He just slung it in the, I got a sermon, that, shake it off. The devil, t- shake it off. Y'all ain't ready for that sermon. Anyway. All right. Why? He got signs of apostle. Watch. Where was it? In Corinthians, somewhere, where was it? He had a thorn in the flesh, and Paul couldn't even heal himself. Why? Because the sign gifts had faded off. Everybody's infatuated with tongues. We're going to get to tongues, and when we get to chapter 2, everybody's really infatuated with tongues. Boy, it's really, you know, it's just really something, you know, if you can speak in another language. Um, until you go to Walmart, and some of them, you know, they're talking, you know, jabbering behind you, and they're talking in another language, and you're thinking, and they're, and they're laughing in between every sentence, and they're behind you, and you know they're talking about you. <laughs> then it ain't that fascinating. You're wanting to turn around and just punch them just in case they're talking about you. Tongues is only mentioned in chapter 2, chapter 10, and chapter 19. Three places in Acts. Now watch. It's mentioned in 1 Corinthians. None in Romans, none in Galatians, none in Thessalonians. Y'all see the end of Acts right here? Acts 28, that's the end. Ephesians, Philippians, Titus, Colossians, Philemon, 1st, 2nd Timothy was written after Acts 28. None. No tongues, tongues, no tongues, tongues, no tongues, tongues, no tongues. None of them right there. Why? It had passed off the scene. You ain't got to like it. I'm just telling you that's the way it works. The sign gifts of the apostle. I don't have to have them. I got the word. First Corinthians, will t- well, we'll get to that later. That's why we don't have apostles today. They're off the scene. We needed them back in the early part of the book of Acts. Why? Because it was Jews require a Greek seek after wisdom. We walk by faith and not by sight. They walk by sight and not by faith. See the difference? All right. Where did I go? Oh, all right. So we got, oh, I got to hurry. Verse uh, 23. And they appointed two. Joseph called uh, Barsabas, who's surnamed Justice. Well, there, there's three names right there for this guy. And Matthias. And they prayed and said... Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of of this ministry and apostleship, uh, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. I'll show you something uh, interesting. Uh, Let's see. Judas goes to his own place. Watch this. 
Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you curse, into everlasting fire prepared for the who? Devil. Hell was prepared for who? The devil and his angels. Acts 1 said Judas went to his... He did something. Verse 26. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles to make 12. Now, let me, let me say this right here because a lot of people, verse 26, and they gave forth their lots. This is something they did in the Old Testament. Well, not, not only in the Old Testament, but even in, the, in these early, matter of fact, they cast lots for uh, the soldiers. The four soldiers cast lots for Jesus's garment. What they do is a game that they play. It's a game uh, that they play, and they, it's, it's not like shooting dice or anything like that. The best way I know to describe it is, y'all remember drawing straws, and you'd pick, and then somebody get the short one? All the straws would be the same size, except there'd be a short one. And then whoever drew that short one, you know, they were whatever. It's the only, only way I know to uh, describe it. Let's just, just picture. Now, this ain't the way they did, so don't go out and say, Brother Jeremy said they just drew straws. They had a similar game like that that he played. But they, it wasn't a matter of just, okay, picking straws or whatever. They prayed. said, God, we're asking you right now to let the lot fall on the guy that you want. And these two guys drew, and Matthias drew the short, the short straw and was picked. Now you say, how do you know, how do you know that Matthias was the right one? Is because in the next chapter, the Holy Spirit, uh, verse 14, and Peter standing up with the 11. So obviously the Holy Spirit classified Matthias in with the 12 in chapter 2. All right. And that concludes chapter uh, 1. Anyway. Oh, I want to show you this before we go too. Y'all remember back there, I forgot to show you this one was going on it, or going past it. Acts 1.8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come up on you, up on you. Remember this, there is a difference. The first part of the book of Acts, it's up on Lord, I didn't, uh, I didn't get, I didn't take my medicine. <clears throat> up, you pee on, okay, up on and in you. Y'all know the difference? I'll show you. Remember this one, John 14. And I pray the Father, and he will give you another comfort. No, the comfort. No, this comforter is capitalized. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's a person. That he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Now, wait. We're reading, we're reading John 14, right? John 14 is before the cross. Jesus hadn't died yet, right? Okay. You have to get, that's how you got to do your Bible study. Where yet? I'm before the cross. Jesus hadn't died yet in John 14. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, you know, uh, for he know, uh, but, he, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be. Jesus said the Holy Spirit's coming. First part of the book of Acts, he's going to be with you, upon you, and eventually... The Gentile, he's in me. He ain't upon me. He's in me. He's with, he's in me. You say, big difference. You have to get all of that when you start talking about the book of Acts. This thing is a progression. Anyway, I hope you see it. I know it's heavy. I know it's difficult uh, and all of that. That's why 
Let me point something out. Y'all, were, here's, here's something confusing uh, about when you're talking about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit wasn't in anybody. He came up on them. Give for instance, Samson. Y'all remember Samson? Everybody, this is one, Samson is always used because, you know, people say, well, Samson lost his salvation because it says the, the Holy Spirit departed from Samson. And I was like, oh, lost salvation. It works different in the Old Testament than it does in the New Testament. Old Testament, Sam, whoever it was, I'm just using Samson for, for instance. When Samson get ready to kill him, Philistine, Holy Spirit come up on him. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come and go as needed. Since the day of Pentecost, he's here and he's here to stay. Matter of fact, Ephesians 1.30, Ephesians 4.30, 1.30 and 4.30 says, I'm sealed to the day of redemption. He's not upon, he's in me and he's done sealed me 